Hi, yeah. my name is Mark. Um, I screened this night the movie The Warrior of Love, which is a documentary about the Dachka Circus, which was a peace circus project in the Middle East with Palestinians, Israelis, and people from abroad. The documentary is actually about the whole process, what happened, how we came together, how um, actually with total magic, with total no budget at all, that people just came to offer um, a circus tent equipment. We, there was a man, he, had, uh, he just came to us and said, you know, I have some light and sound equipment in my basement, do you want to borrow it for a few months? So it was such a magical experience and magical project. It's things like that happen to all, all, us all the time. Like one uh, theater project dropped out of the biggest international theater festival of the Middle East, and they asked us to step in. Things like that. So it's it's about what we went through, how we were confronted also with the the situation which is the situation there, the situation uh, with the Palestinian territories, the situation with Syria, the situation how we actually also got manipulated by the military and by some organizations as a circus, as a peace circus, and how we got trapped between the problem that we actually wanted to supersede, which, which was very um, confronting, because you can try, maybe on the edge of naive, to change the world in a place like that, but but you can only by touching people in their hearts and hoping that a little ripple effect will do its work. But you can't be naive that you can change a whole system which is still in place. So I hope that we touched people and that we it, it touched me immediately, amazingly. I've since this project, I've not I've not been the same anymore. It was not. Also, I, when I see myself in a movie now, I'm just thinking like, wow, well, I, was I naive then? <laughs> I was not mm -hmm. proud of the movies oh, okay. about Israel and Israel. Just because um, I was proud because my, my grandfather, mm -hmm. he actually made history. He filmed history. Mm -hmm. So the movies was not about uh, like that Israeli history, history is great, but it's amazing that there is footage of actually what happened back then in 1948, and that my uh, my grandfather was one of the people who was was looking for the truth and uh, tried to uh, to be the first to have to be there with his camera and to to show what is happening in history. And it's amazing that that footage is still existing and that mm -hmm. uh, that we have that now. I got the impression that uh, by this Arab guy who was upset about that. And then you know, on the end, uh, I see you all together. Uh, so um, that's how a, this process went, also, um, you know. Like that's a that's a that's creative directing of the film directors okay. because that was not the case at all. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and that's one of the comments I had on uh -huh. the, on the movie that they created this storyline between me and the uh -huh. uh, the Palestinian guy, which is uh, was not there at all. Mm -hmm. We were we were like, big friends from the beginning. Okay, <laughs> actually. When when I was telling the story about the history that was that with the footage, uh, I didn't know that he already arrived because we just in the last m minute heard that the Palestinian guy might arrive, mm -hmm. and this this evening was already planned, so he just fell in the middle of it. So they changed they the, <laughs> the film people they changed a little bit mm -hmm. uh, some oh, stuff, it's, which it's is a, their yeah, creative okay. freedom. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, yeah. <laughs> Dachka, the word Dachka means joy and laughter, and the, the subtitle of the circus was Laughter is an International Language of Peace. Um, the dream started with a few people who said, like, we want to, to just go across all the whole situation there and just make people laugh, make a circus which is for children, for small children, for big children and just touch people in their heart and has nothing to do with, with where people come from. So from the beginning it was like the dream was to involve everybody who just wanted to be involved and it's an area where different types of people live, um, both Jewish and Arab and Bedouin and, and, and Palestinian and Druze and, 
so the, the dream was to make, to make a circus with all kinds of different peoples from those different areas. Yeah, we fulfilled it, Ab yeah, absolutely, because uh, behind the scenes there was a lot of other Palestinian people also involved. Like on stage there was this one guy, Mohammed, who, who you see in the film, and Khaled was one of the people who was back in the back involved in it. So yeah, it was a, a common project with Israelis and Palestinians and, uh, and some Europeans like me. That's that's a very very big big answer because, but many people maybe not know is that how how to say this. The Palestinian people, how are they now called? There are different. There are many different groups. Like in Israel, are pe a group of people living uh, which are called the Israeli Arabs, which is actually just Arabs, Palestinians. You can all call them the same. Um, who live in areas which are happen to be Israel now, like in Akko and like in Yafo and also in Jerusalem. But now nowadays, especially in the rest of Israel, uh, like Akko and Yafo and Nazareth, uh, people uh, tend to call themselves also Palestinian to, to identify with the Palestinian uh, dream. Um, but in daily life, Israel. Um, the uh, Arabs or Palestinians who live there just go to work, have their work, and it's mixed with Israelis. And yes, it's segregated, because if you look, for for example, to, to Nazareth, there is all kind of uh, Palestinian Arabs uh, neighborhoods, and there's Jewish neighborhoods. And some are mixed working together. Like, I know a lot of people who, that Palestinians uh, or Arabs and, uh, and Israelis work together, but in other areas, they don't work together at all. They are just totally segregated. But it's the same with other groups. Like, for example, Israel is not one cohesive community. There is Moroccans, there is Russians, there's Ethiopians, there is like from many, many different countries. It's an immigrant country. So, uh, for example, the Russians are also very, very together. There, there's a young generation Russian people who live there, who only speak Russian, only work with Russians, only live with Russian uh, families and marry with Russians, only have Russian friends. They don't even speak Hebrew, which is, which is a weird situation. So uh, it's, there's a, it's, it's much more complicated, uh, this whole area. Um, also, in the West Bank, there are areas that Palestinians and, and Israelis work together. There are also areas where Palestinians work for Israelis. This is the most common thing, because Palestinians, if they work for Israeli uh, companies or organizations in the West Bank, they have more work. <laughs> for example, the housing projects, like there's, a, everybody knows about settlements, that um, a little thing, thing about settlements, um, not all Jewish cities or villages in the West Bank are illegal set settlements, because there are also villages and cities who are already for 300 years there, or for 70 years or whatever. So that's not illegal. The illegal settlements are the, the new settlements which are made on grounds which is actually belonging to Palestinian people and they just take the ground away. Those are the real illegal ones. But there are also um, villages which have already been there for many, many years and they just build a new neighborhood. And uh, the best thing for Palestinians living close to that is to work on that working ground <laughs> because it's good jobs. So. It's so much more complicated, the whole situation, than we know here from the media. First thing to do if you want to help is to educate yourself. It is very important that people understand in the West that the, the, what we see through the media about um, Israel and Palestine is not true. Or even is maybe this small part why, of why the Why is truth. it so? Why is it so? Because... Um, if I, if for, for example, if you, I ask you a question about what you think of Holland, and I ask him, and I ask her there, you get all different opinions. So people have always their own truth, their own background, their own opinion. Also, if you speak with Israeli and Palestinians in, 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 the, in the Middle East, you, get, you speak with thousand people, you get thousand different opinions. So there is no one point of view. There are many Palestinians, they want... Uh, 
a separate Palestinian country. There are many Palestinians who want a federation of Israel and Palestine. There are many Palestinians who want no separation <coughs> at all, but just one country. The same on the Israeli side. Yeah? There, there, there are Israelis who, who, f who hate Palestinians, who fear them, who are brought up from, from very small childhood that they will kill, uh, kill you, they will attack you, they will ki kidnap you. The same in the Palestinian side, there are people who hate Israelis. But there are many, many, many more people who don't hate the other group at all, because they realize that everybody is being manipulated. Everybody is a, a victim of the situation, which is all about money and which is all about power. Why, if everybody there and everybody in the world still uh, uh, wants peace in the Middle East for many, 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 many years, and there's still no peace? because there's much, too much money involved, too much uh, thing behind the scenes involved. So the first thing that we, we need to realize, and if you want to help with situations like that, is first educate yourself and realize what is the truth. Because if you go there then, and you help with some projects, you will know um, how biased the project maybe is, and you can make a difference. That's, that's I think, not only for this situation, but for the whole world. For every, everything which is going wrong, wrong in the world, just first realize how, where does it come from and why is it like that, before you just jump to conclusions. Um, there are many, many, many projects like this in Israel and Palestine. They, they ne never ever go to come to the media because it's not interesting enough, it's not news. We were lucky that, that we had a... Um, a writer, which was a friend of ours, who wrote a five-page um, article in the biggest newspaper of Israel. He just did it, and he just wrote Circus Palestine, which actually we were quite angry on that he took that, because we are not Circus Palestine. But he, what he did with that, he created a momentum that people got interested in the project, and that, pe that, um, that um, press from abroad um, came to interview us and to, to, to film us, like the, the, pre the French press agency. <coughs> and because of that, we were in the newspapers in Brunei and in South America. And, but you know, it's, it's like that. It's like, oh, there's a funny circus, la 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 la. And they have a really good article. It was really a good and, and neutral and objective article. But the next day, in the same newspaper, there's the same bullshit again. <laughs> so. It's interesting. It's, it's very interesting how that works. So if you want to make a difference in things like that, go there. Be with the people. Be among the people. Don't believe the newspapers or any media at all. I, I had no, no, no uh -huh, time okay. to see okay. another other movie, so uh, I, I was quite impressed with how many movies was, uh, was, was shown here. And I was, it's really nice in, in, uh, in living rooms and... Uh, packed together very cozy with a lot of people so I think it's it's great and it should it should should, should go more times um, maybe every year or whatever so it's a good idea